Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. In this video, I'm going to share with you this new to me wig that I'm wearing. But before I go there, I'm also gonna share with you some tips that you can do and you can think about to avoid from making a huge wig buying mistake. <laughs> I've been there, I know. So stay tuned. So much for joining me on my head tonight i have a brand new raquel welch wig called unfiltered now unfiltered is a newer release but it has been around a while so it's not a brand spanking new release but i think it's important for everyone to be able to see especially when you're thinking about buying a wig to look at a wig and see how it looks on someone that has a completely different face shape than maybe some of the other YouTubers or some of the models that you're seeing in the wig store. So before I go into the specs of this cap and all of the details, let me just tell you, if you are new to wearing wigs, you need to pay attention to your face shape and the dimensions. I am exactly nine inches from my hairline on the side of my nose down to my chin. I have what is considered a long face. I also have a high forehead. I don't have a short forehead. I have a high forehead. Forehead. I also have a wide face. If you measure from ear to ear across my face, I have a wide face. So when you look at someone that's modeling a wig, maybe on YouTube or, or a photo on a website, and you're seeing this wig and it looks beautiful and you're all excited because it's everything you've ever wanted, you buy it, you get it home, you put it on your head, and you have a heart attack. Literally. You, you, I've been there. I, I, I put something on my head and I start to cry. I go, oh my God, this looks nothing, nothing like I imagined it would look. And the mistake is mine because in the beginning, I didn't educate myself as to what to look for when I went and bought a wig. So there's a YouTuber that I watch. She has a nine inch face. When I look at her talking about a wig that I'm interested in, I know that based on the length of her face, I pretty well have a good idea of where that wig is going to fall on me. But if she has a very narrow face, if it isn't as wide, it's going to look different. Even though she has nine inches, she could be very petite and have a very thin face where I have very a full face and wide cheeks. So that same wig that looks on her nine inch face would even look different on my nine inch face based on how wide my face is. So when you look at your face, measure this way, measure your forehead, measure ear to ear, and really take a look. Do you have a heart-shaped face? Do you have big cheeks? Do you have a pointed chin? Is your chin square? What is the shape of your face? And then compare that to the model. So when I'm thinking of buying a wig, first of all, I'll go on the manufacturer's website and I don't even pay any attention to the photos they have. Usually those photos are unrealistic to me. They mean nothing to me. I've seen gorgeous wigs on people that review a wig but look at the manufacturer's photo and say I would never buy that ever off of that photo. So I go to the manufacturer's site or the wig company that's selling it and I look at the dimensions of the wig. How long is the wig? For example, this piece from here to here, the side bang piece, the fringe, whatever you want to call this, is 10 inches. So I know if I have a nine inch head and this is measured correctly on me, that I'm gonna have about an inch. Now, if you pull it down, which I don't want to do, I'll probably have a little bit more than that. So I know that looking at it. I also know that the crown, the back, is nine, is nine inches. So I have 10 inch bang, nine inch from the crown to the back, you can see this is a really cute bob style, don't you think? And it's an angled bob, and it's chin length. And so I also know that the nape is 3.5, so I know it's gonna cover the back of my neck really well. And then I know the sides here are six inches. So I had a pretty good idea as to how this would actually physically lay on my head. 
when I saw it, when I took the dimensions and when I looked at mine. I knew that this would come down and I knew this would be shorter, you know, so which is totally fine. So then I searched a couple of different YouTube videos. Here's the wig I want. I go into YouTube. I put it in the search bar for Kyle Welch Unfiltered Wig Review. And up pops everyone that's reviewed this wig. So then I look at the people. I may not watch all the videos, but I look at the people and I try to look at who looks to be closest to me. Meaning not so much my age or anything of that nature, but what physically almost like my size, you know, type of thing. I've watched reviews that beautiful women have done and I watch those reviews because I want to see how the wig flows. But I also know it's not going to look on me like it looks on them. So measuring your face is super, super important. I wish I had done that the first time I bought a wig. And for example, I recently bought a another Raquel Welch, I'll show you in a minute, and that is shorter on me than anyone else. And any pictures I've seen on any websites and any reviews, that wig is shorter on me than those. And it's because I have that nine inch head. That's why the wig. And also because not only do I have a nine inch head, I have a wide face. So I watched a review, someone has a nine inch head, their skin, their face is a lot more narrow, the, the, the hair lays different than it does on me. So measure, 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 watch video reviews like crazy. Then secondly, a lot of people shy away from the heat friendly fibers. This is actually my Raquel Welch editor's pick in the exact same shade that I have on. This has the bangs in the front and the highlight is a little less. I don't think it's quite as strongly highlighted as this one is. I mean, there's highlights there for sure. So the heat friendly fiber means that I could do some heat treating if I wanted. I could really style this if I wanted. But more importantly, this is going to give you fibers that are very, very realistic. They're very fluffy. They flow really nice in the wind. They look real. Now, when you buy a synthetic wig that isn't heat friendly, and it depends on manic from different manufacturers, to be honest with you. Some are, are known to be more high shine and some less shine. But most of your wigs that are not heat friendly are going to have shine. If you put a wig on your head, you love the style, the fluff, everything is perfect. And it looks like, like a helmet of shine on your head. It's going to scream, I have a wig on. You can have the most beautiful hair, but if it's overly shiny, it's going to look fake. No matter what the hairline does, no matter what the style does, it's going to look fake. So I have a couple of different dry shampoos that I use. I, I have the um, Beach Babe, Not Your Mother's Beach Hair, or whatever it is when you get in Walmart. I buy that one a lot. It's not, it doesn't have any kind of a color. It's natural, so you can spray it on, and it'll just kind of dull that shine a little bit. And then I also have the ones that have like the Batiste, which has golden or brown that you can spray on, which will give you a little bit of a tint if you want. So it really all depends on what you're looking for. Same shade, same manufacturer, Raquel Welch. This is Editor's Pick. This is unfiltered, same color, shaded cappuccino. I have one more. This is the one. This one was sent to me for review initially way back when, and this one I bought. This is Upstage. This is also in the same color as this, but Upstage is the one that sits on me shorter than I expected. And again, that just goes to show you, I mean, here's a little mannequin's little tiny petite thing, right? So realistically speaking, I shouldn't expect this to sit the same, and I don't. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put them on. Completely different look, huh? Wide tooth comb, it's the only thing you really need to comb these with. But this is Raquel Welch Upstage, shaded cappuccino, the exact same color as my unfiltered. And while I have the unfiltered off, I'll show you the cap. What I really love about unfiltered is this monofilament. I can part this with some training on either side if I want. This has Velcro adjusters here so you can cinch it down a little bit. Air tabs. Really nice. This wig really does not, in my opinion, have any permities. So when I first got this wig and I put it on, I had to play with it a little bit 
to um, to kind of spruce it to kind of boost it up a little but a lot of people shy away from this type of a wig because of the heat defiant fibers they're worried about the upkeep and to me the best thing in the world is to get yourself a really nice comb I use this I have several of these little John Minot combs never take it from the top and comb down Always, I put it on a wig head, and I, I'm not going to do it here because I need to, but very gently, I comb out the edges, very gently. And if you take care of these, these will last forever. I'm, well, I shouldn't say that. They won't last forever, but they will last a long time. So this is upstage, and a lot of people will say, oh, that's so short compared to the photos. Well, it is. It is short compared to the photos. I also feel that some people have asked me, do you think that this has been cut? I bought this used, and I did ask the um, the lady that sold it to me, and she said, no, she had not altered it. And I believe her. I think it's just that it looks short on me because of my shape, my length. So now I'm going to show you my other wig. You ready? I must admit that style-wise, with the fringe, the slight fringe, and the cut, I really like this a lot. So this is Editor's Pick. I think there is nothing as nice as a Raquel Welch. I think their lace front is just, I think just amazing. Raquel Welch has, her, has just impeccable lace fronts. Editor's Pick, different styles, same shades, different way, you know, it lands on me. Now I do think this one has a bit more lighter around the face. I don't know why, I just feel that way. But upstage, straight. No permatease. This upstage is a 100% hand, hand tied cap. Very, very, very comfortable. I love this wig. This wig is awesome. It's really hard to tell, you know, when you think about wigs, which one do you like the best? What looks the best on you? What do you think? So anyways, I just wanted to share this with you because I bought this and I knew exactly what to expect. So when I got this, there were there was no surprises at all. I had I know my face dimensions. I've gone on websites. I've watched a number of different reviews. I knew that I would like this wig a lot, and and I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid of the heat defiant fibers. So avoid those mistakes. Measure measure your face very carefully. And everyone talks about measuring your length, measuring your width. But I'm going to tell you, measure here as well. And if not measure, do sort of like a dimension of your face. How, what kind of a chin do you have? Is it pointed? Is it square? Is it round? Do you have wide cheeks? Is your face long and narrow? Because the long and narrow, obviously, the hair is going to look different. It's going to lay different. These are all things you have to consider. Synthetic, you're going to get synthetic and you're going to get shiny hair. Do you like permatease? or do you not? Now, unfortunately, most manufacturers are not going to say, oh, yeah, loaded with permatees. They might call it permalift. They might call it perma something else. But nobody's going to say, hey, this is loaded with permatees. But most of your really pretty short hairdos are going to have some permatees because you want to have that lift. This is Editor's Pick. It has permatees. It also has a lot of hair. This one, unfiltered, if it has permatease, I haven't been able to find it. And it does not have. It's more of a low density volume when, when you think about it for the hair. And this one, the, um, upstage, oh my gosh. I, I really, I mean, this one has, this, with the hand tied, there's no permatease at all. So out of all these three wigs, the same color, Raquel Welch, my editor's pick is going to have the most permatease. I also have another Raquel Welch wig. It's called Flirt Alert. This is Flirt Alert, and Flirt Alert is in the color Shaded Wheat. This is Heat Defiant, and when I wear this, you know, this almost reminds me very much of a curlier version of Upstage, where Flirt Alert is basically the same length, but Flirt Alert has a little bit more of the curls, and the color is different where Upstage is more straighter. You see, they're very similar. Very similar in uh, length. Color is different. Where I have more of a golden blonde in the shaded wheat and 
more a little bit more platinum I think uh, highlights in a light brown base in shaded cappuccino pretty interesting when you start seeing these comparisons side by side here's the back of my editor's pick this I just love the color I still can't I still am debating between shaded cappuccino on my head and shaded wheat so anyways guys I hope this helps I hope this helps you avoid you know not making a wig mistake because wigs are pricey they are they're pricey and even though I have hair my hair is thinning I still have hair and I can go with my natural hair. I don't want to put a whole lot of processing in my hair. I want to take care of my hair as much as possible. Wigs make it so that I can feel pretty, that I can feel like I have nice hair, that I feel I can, you know, get on camera and not worry about my roots or this or that. So I love being able to do that. I love being able to do that. So thank you guys so much for watching my wig video. They're not my most popular videos but I enjoy doing them. So thank you guys. I'll see you in my next video.